Last week, when we were at home, I had a great conversation with a reporter from one of the big cable news networks. And she had all sorts of questions, but they were personality, you know, who's fighting with who, who doesn't like who. And I stopped her and said, do you realize how much of this year of all discretion is borrowed? And she said, yes, David, I watched part of your speech the other day. And understand, none of my national audience cares. My producers don't care. Dear Lord, I hope that's not true. Because it's the single thing that wipes out a republic. Look what's happened over history. The debt is what destroys you. Maybe that's why we're terrified to talk about it. So once again, why this was important is a year ago, so let's go back, way back, like a year ago May. This year we were supposed to only borrow about $980 billion, only. As of two weeks ago, our best math, because remember, healthcare costs had gone up dramatically. I think our math was in the first seven months of this fiscal year had gone up, just Medicare had gone up 16%. Interest costs had gone up 130 billion, and now continue, because we're even at higher interest rates than that previous calculation. And tax receipts had fallen like 10% substantially because capital gain taxes. I mean, who's gonna sell an asset when most of your gain is inflation? And, and there's historic precedents that, that during times of high inflation, people stop selling things because you're going to get taxed on not gain, but inflation. We were calculating that this year's borrowing was going to be about $1.8 trillion. Now with the Supreme Court ruling on student debt, take away two, three hundred billion from that. So that's the good news. The terrifying news, once again, still is almost all of discretionary spending is on borrowed money. So, let's have some more fun with math. It doesn't really change some of the outside economists' calculation from about three weeks ago. So CBO basically said, hey guys, well you did the debt ceiling deal, you probably pulled down debt to GDP by about four points. Remember we were seeing things we were gonna be in the end of the 10 year window, nine budget years from now, at about 119% of debt to GDP. Remember, that's publicly held debt. Um, let's make this point. When you see the number, it says there's a, you know, a 32 and a half trillion dollars of debt. A few trillion of that is actually money we borrow from ourselves. It's, this is the money that's in the healthcare trust fund. This is the money that's set aside for future benefits for veterans. We internally borrow that. Now, we still pay interest on it. Like when the Treasury borrows money from the Social Security Trust Fund, we pay interest. Matter of fact, for years it was actually a spiff. They actually got a little higher than market interest rates. So there's two plus trillion dollars in Social Security Trust Fund. And we're going to burn through that in about eight and a half, nine years. But for that remaining 25, 26 trillion dollars of borrowing, that's where we're at today. CBO now updates the number saying, hey, you made the debt ceiling deal. You're basically going to remove about $100 billion of spending for the next few years on discretionary. So instead of spend, spending $700 billion, you're going to spend $600 billion. That brought us down to 115% of debt to GDP. But then Moody's did their calculation and saying, well, with higher interest rates, higher health care costs, and we believe flat GDP growth, we think at the end of the 10 years, you're going to be at 120% of debt to GDP. Why that's a big deal is that's higher than during World War II. The one that terrified me was Bloomberg Intelligence. They actually have a fairly sophisticated data model, like Tax Foundation, like Joint um, uh, Tax, others here, CBO has one. The Bloomberg model said, nah, you're going to like $52 trillion of borrowed money, 130% of debt to GDP at the end of the 10-year window. If this is true, please, I desperately hope Bloomberg Intelligence isn't true, but if you read their notes, it makes sense. And there's a couple things I want to throw out why their notes make sense. That's in 10 years we're spending about $2 trillion a year in interest. Remember, 
CBO today, well, actually, last week, put out their long-term estimates. Their long-term estimates, because I know we all grabbed it and read it last week when it came out. Remember the little booklet? It's percentages of GDP to debt, but in there are some line items. What's the borrowing? What's the interest cost next year? CBO, which has been far too conservative on some of these numbers for the last decade. But what did CBO say we're going to spend in interest next year? Three quarters of a trillion dollars next year. My math for this year was about 620, 630. We have one economist with us that says it could be 680, depending on the cost of this recent financing. But what was fascinating is something those who, is, who care about the honest math don't talk about is in the notes from Bloomberg Intelligence, they said, hey, guys, you really, really, really need to cut spending. Okay, but do understand, it's not a free option anymore. So when Bloomberg Analytics came back and said you're going to be at 51 plus trillion dollars of borrowed money at the 10 years, 130% of debt to GDP, think of this. Just the removal of that $100 billion of spending, got to do, going to pay interest on it and those things, but that's going to lower GDP next year by half a point. So one of the things that goes on here is we're going to cut this, fine, we need to reduce spending, but don't think it's a free option that the GDP continues to grow because you just removed $100 billion of spending out of the economy. Now, you got to do it, but it, when you do it, you also have to adopt other policies that grow. And there's the thing that frustrates me so much around here. It's we're incapable of thinking complex answers for complex problems. It's not just cut. You've got to have policies over here grow, promote investment, promote risk-taking. You don't get to just do one without the other.